Hello, this is Joseph, and in this screencast, we're going to be going over the right routing system. Now, the right routing system is simplistic at its core. It's intended to actually only do routing. If you're trying to manage your application state or history, that's not what the routing system is designed to do. Now, the, also, the example I'm providing here will be available to you in the links below. It is on some GitHub gist link, and you can just download the zip to follow along. So the example I have here is a simple little blog system I had kind of set up with Riot. And the purpose of this is when I click read more, I want the actual Riot system to recognize it, react to it, and then go ahead and swap out my recent post section with the actual post or the article. So let's go ahead and actually dive into this. We want to go ahead and initialize the routing system. And that's really just one command. You have write.route.start. And I'm going to include true on here and then tell you why. So the write routing system, when it, uh, when you specify the start, it doesn't actually parse the current URL. This lets you kind of set up before you actually want to start to react to the URL that's currently present. And so if you put in true, it'll just go ahead and immediately react to it um, and if you don't, then whenever your application is ready to start routing, then you can just do riot.route.exec. So I'll go ahead and leave that out for now, switch this back to true. The other part to this is by default, the routing system works off of the hash system. So when you have like hash in your URL, it'll look at the hash and anything after that, go ahead and route to it. And you can change this, this behavior as well. So you can do riot.route.base and then specify what you want as the base. So it could either be the default hash, hash bang, which is sometimes what you use with Google or other search engines to say this is an Ajax URL, but just remove it. And if I have server sites and rendering set up, then just go to that. Or you can actually just use a slash. Now, being uh, careful when using just a slash, because if your server is not configured to go route all URLs back to this index page here, what's going to happen is you're going to get a broken URL. So just when I had went to the read more and you saw it was broken because uh, of it doesn't exist and I don't have any routes set up on my server to, to understand what this means, you're going to get the same thing. So someone's going to sit there and copy and paste this URL to someone else via social media or just in some messaging system and they're going to get the same thing happening. So if you don't have any type of server system set up to react to it or server side rendering with Riot, then I just recommend hash uh, as a default. The other part to this is, like I said, this doesn't manage your application state. So you actually need to mount each component or each tag in Riot when a route is triggered. So what we're going to do is simplify this. We're going to, or at least move it, we're going to move the initialization of this components inside of a route, a default route, the first route that you get when you see the blog. So to define a route, we're going to do riot.route. And this is a method. The first parameter is you're going to specify the route, which is just a slash. The next one is the function, which is what happens when the route is reached. So what we're going to do here then is swap this out with a, just a div ID of main. And then go ahead and, and, and mount to that. So we're going to say riot.mount. And we're going to specify the CSS selector. And then we're going to specify the component. So post recent. And we're then going to specify the parameter for that. So this is post, and it'll pull from recent post. Now my recent post is in my post.js file and it's just referencing my, my post here. So I'm not doing any Ajax, I'm not loading any remote content. This is all local memory because this is loaded on top as well here. Here I have my post and all my tags as well as write. Go ahead and load it up. So now if I go back, I'll actually see the recent post show up now. So again, it's not really here anymore. It's moved into my route, and my route is saying when, I, when this is reached, do the following. 
So now let's go ahead and actually set up the, the next route when you click on read more. So let's do riot.route again. And this time we're going to do blog slash entry slash star and star. So this first star is meaning uh, the first parameter of the function will be this star and the next parameter of the, of the function will be this star. And this is just gobbledygook of some slug URL, pretty URL thing, and then the next one is going to be uh, the ID. So I'm going to say function slug and ID. And again, this is mapping to the first and second star. So the first star maps to this parameter, the second star maps to the second parameter. You can call it whatever you want, it doesn't have to be anything uh, specific to the URL. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say riot dot mount. I'm going to I'm going to target the same uh, DOM element, and I'm going to say post dash entry, and we'll go ahead and pass in my post based off the ID inside post. So I'm going to say post, and then I'm going to say post, which is pulling from my in memory of all my posts. And I'm going to go ahead and use this URL and pass it into that because it's a key value uh, object. So now, if this is all said and done, let's go ahead and refresh and click Read More and see what happens. It breaks. And it breaks for a good reason. Um, when we have the URL, you'll notice that the slash is still there. So we actually need to be explicit when we're doing this and put a hash in front of it. This is a good way to let you kind of jump out into other URLs like external links or whatnot and not have to be bound to the routing system when you're, when you're trying to not use the slash. If you are using the slash, there are ways to still jump out of it without having to continuously uh, be stuck inside of Riot. So I'm going to go back. And now when I click on Read More, it actually loads it here. And then I can use the browser history system to re-trigger the previous route and it just reacts to it. So it keeps mounting then back and forth. So I can go there, back. I can also go back home by clicking my home link and I'll load it there. So this does like a full page refresh versus actually just going back. And this is the start of everything. You can start to now build Riot applications as single pages with the routing thing. But there's a couple of things that we still need to touch on and that is what ifs. So there are certain apps that when you click on a link, let's say that there was a comment system you wanted to show or hide it based off some parameter. This is also known as kind of deep linking, where you can provide more information to the page or the route you're going to via query parameters. So I can have something like show comments equals one. If I go ahead and refresh this, the route no longer works. And that's because the way that write works is that this star literally means anything after the or before the next slash so it doesn't understand what that means it doesn't understand that this is a query parameter and it should be ignored but you can fix this so the way that you fix this is by using dot dot so now if I had not do that if I put dot dot and I go to my back to my browser and I hit enter one more time I get my post component showing but it's broken it's not working well let's go ahead and see why so let's do console.log Let's do uh, slug and ID. So we're just passing in the parameters and the console log of them to see what parameters I'm getting back. And here I have the slug correct, but the ID, the last uh, number of the ID is getting cut off. It's supposed to be 61, not 6. So what's going on? Well, the thing is, is you, you, you just can't combine star and dot dot together. Right doesn't understand that correctly. And you actually need to introduce a slash. So what the slash is going to do is say that anything after the slash, then dot dot, and then I can use the query parameters. So let me try to just one more time. Okay, so now it's not working at all. Why? Well, remember that we put this slash in there, so we need to fix this um, the slug as well and put the slash in there, and then we can have something like show comments equals one. So let's just go back home and click on this and now we actually have it working again but that doesn't really help us because how do we get show comments how do we get these query parameters well riot actually has a way to do that so you can do riot.route.query 
and this will give you an object based off of query parameters. So now I have my object in my query and it's show comments and it's set to one. So that, that fixes that problem. If you want to do deep linking, you want to provide extra parameters to your route, you're just going to have to add an extra slash with a dot dot if you already have a star there. If not, don't worry about it. Just put the dot dot there and do whatever you want. And like I said, it doesn't respect the, the query parameters anyway. It doesn't really know about it as far as the routing system goes. So you can have something like whatever question mark equals foo um, or goo equals another ash. Just like this, this works. Just it will create a third parameter, and what you have, whatever you have for that third parameter, will then be passed into whatever you have set. So I'm gonna do some of this stuff here. Okay, so there's there's three me three more things to touch on to, but I won't do them in this screencast. It'll be part two for writing. Um, one is actually creating a parser. That is that you, if you want to do like the key pair parsing or introduce a different route parser, you can actually do that with route or with a riot and provide a second parser on top of it because it's based off the number of uh, parsers you have available to you. So you can use riot as kind of the base parser and then extend it with the, your own custom parser or just get rid of the, the whole parser altogether. Now, the other thing uh, to mention is that there's ways to group your route. So if you want to do route grouping, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, it's going to take a little more time for me to get into, so that'll be in part two as well. The last thing is, at some point, you may need to actually stop listening to URL routing. You may want to turn it off. And you can actually just use route uh, route.stop, right? That route.stop. And if you're using the group, then you do that group.stop as well. Um, it's nothing to really go over to. I don't know that the many edge cases of when you actually do want to stop routing, but just know that's available to you. If you need to stop listening to the route history um, being changed, you, right lets you stop doing that. And that's basically it. Hopefully this is enough to get started. Uh, like I said, there will be a part two, which is customizing um, the route parser, stopping routes, and actually doing grouping of routes. Until then, have a good day.